All right, so lecture 11. Uh, this is where we left off last time. This is the actual uh, formula known as a wave function to describe completely an electron around a hydrogen atom. It is very, very nasty, um, but you don't actually have to do any math with that. I'm not quite that mean. This is what happens when you take these uh, constants, n and l and uh, m uh, and, uh, and, and uh, so on, and actually look at um, electrons and their energy levels. Okay, you get uh, a bunch of different um, uh, uh, energy states for the electron to exist in. Okay. So... Um, now, one, zero, and zero, just a little circle, a sphere, actually. Two, zero, zero is a bigger sphere. Two, one, zero looks kind of like a peanut. Two, one, one is a peanut with a different orientation. Here we have another sphere, another peanut, another peanut, a uh, cloverleaf, a different cloverleaf, uh, a, a weirder, you know, it, 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 it's hard to tell, but it's actually an even more different peanut. Uh, a sphere so big it's overwhelming the screen, and so on. Okay, these are the different energy levels of uh, the electron around the hydrogen atom. Okay. And these are the different formulas that represent them. Okay. And again, you're not going to have to do math with these. Okay. But you are going to have to learn about uh, those uh, um, uh, 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 constants, okay, the n, the l, m sub l, and m sub s. Um, they look pretty awful. They're not that bad. Okay. What we're looking at is an address. Okay. Um, we're looking at um, you know, so, sort of like a street address, you know, has the person's name, the, the street address, then the state and the zip code and things like that, you know, the country if you're mailing overseas. Okay. Each one of these describes a different uh, 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 region of space uh, around the, the nucleus. They're also describing the energy of the electron, but also a region of space. Okay? Um, the odd one out for that is the, uh, the, this last one, m sub s. Um, but even that can be um, related to a sort of address. Okay? Now, the thing about n is it's an integer greater than, z uh, greater than uh, uh, zero. Yes, greater than zero. So n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and so on. Um, it's called the principal quantum number. Uh, L is the angular quantum number. Um, it talks about the angular momentum of the electron. Don't worry too much about that. Um, but uh, it is an integer that goes from 0 to n minus 1. So if n equals 1, then L can be 0. Um, if n equals 2, L can be 0, or L can be 1. Uh, if n equals 3, L can be 0, it can be 1, it can be 2. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and write this down for the visual, lear Oop. visual learners among you. you know, if n equals 0, then L can equal 0. N equal, oh, sorry. If n equals 1, L can only be 0. If n equals uh, 2, L can be zero or it can be one. If n equals three, L can be zero, one, or two. Okay. Uh, next up, we have the magnetic quantum number. That things are starting to get weird there when trying to think about them in terms of uh, uh, real physical quantities, so don't try. Uh, that is an integer uh, from negative L to L. Okay. So uh, n equals 1, l equals 0, m sub l can only be uh, uh, 0. Uh, l is equal to 0, so m sub l is only 0. Um, but if m l is equal to 1, then m sub l can be negative 1, 0, or 1. Uh, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. Uh, and if l is equal to 2, then m sub l can be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, or 2. Okay. And as you go up in uh, n, you get more L available, and with each L, 
uh, you get more M sub L available. Okay, so these are just the different regions of space. Um, and finally, you have M sub S, which is the spin. Uh, the electrons act as if they were spinning. Um, that, that's something you get a lot in quantum mechanics, I'm sad to say. Um, that things act as if. Okay, so for, you know, in classical physics, you have a charged object, you make it spin, it's going to have a magnetic field. And an electron, even though it's a, a, a point in space, it's a, it's a smudge of wave, it's, it's, uh, it acts as if it were a spinning classical object, so it generates this sort of magnetic field. And it can have uh, spin plus one half or minus one half. Um, and that is independent of the rest of them. M sub M sub S equals positive one half or negative one half. Um, don't worry too much about the fact that it's a half or a minus one half. Um, just realize that means that it's pointing up or it's pointing down. So it's called spin up or spin down. Now. Another way of uh, naming these is level, sublevel, orbital, spin. I think that kind of flows off the tongue. Level, sublevel, orbital, spin. Level, sublevel, orbital, spin. So it, it works fairly well to remember. Um, you can also think of it as shell, subshell, orbital, spin. Um, I don't really care. Um, but <laughs> uh, in terms of what these actually represent, every level is divided into some number of sublevels. Every sublevel is divided into some number of orbitals, and every orbital can hold two electrons, one spin up, one spin down. Okay. So you can think of it, let's go ahead and erase these. You can think of it like this. Um, if you, here is you know, n equals zero, l equals zero. It can have one electron spin up, one electron spin down, okay? You can have n equals one, l equals one, or l equals zero, one spin up, one spin down, l equals one, m sub l equals negative one, zero, and one, and each one of those can hold two electrons, and so on. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. Um, so uh, for the atomic levels, in the orbital gives you the distance from the nucleus. So you can think of it as like the floor of a hotel. You have the ground floor, the first floor, the second floor. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm uh, thinking European. Uh, the ground floor, then a floor above that, then a floor above that. Uh, oh, well, of course, n can only equal 1. Oh, I'm sorry. So going back to uh, this, this is n equals 1, n equals 2, and then you have n equals 3, l equals 0, 1, or 2, and so on. So the higher energy level gets you further from the nucleus, so it's like the floor of the hotel. First floor, second floor, third floor. And each level is divided into sublevels. Uh, you can sort of think of those like first class, second class, third class, I guess. So the first floor only has the one sublevel. Okay, so it's not actually divided. There's just the one place within there. Okay, L equals zero. So one total sublevel. Okay, and the second floor has two sublevels. The third floor has three sublevels. Fourth, four, fifth, five, sixth, sixth. Okay fairly straightforward. Now, each sublevel is a sort of section of the level. Um, it's which apartment on the floor of the hotel, you know, a hotel room or a hotel suite, that one. Okay, a lower sublevel means you're closer to the nucleus. A higher sublevel is going to be further from the nucleus. But the difference between sublevels is not as big as the difference between levels. Okay, that's why I've been drawing them like this. Energy level one, energy level two, big difference, energy level, or L equals one, zero, L equals one, not as far apart. Okay, energy level three, zero, one, two. Okay, so sublevels are closer together than energy levels. Okay. So you go, 
uh, you get to the floor of the hotel, you're on the first sub-level, then you go up a smaller flight of stairs, you get to the next, then the next flight of the stairs, you get to the next, okay? Okay. Now, each of those sub-levels is divided into orbitals, okay? Some number of orbitals, okay? Um, and those orbitals are all at the same energy, okay? That's why I've been drawing them, uh, or trying to draw them on a horizontal line like this. These three orbitals are at the same energy. These three orbitals are at the same energy. These five orbitals are at the same energy, okay? Um, and because M sub L, the, uh, uh, the orbital uh, the angular momentum, um, I'm sorry, the magnetic, uh, whatever, uh, it can have, uh, uh, a certain number of values, you know, zero, negative one, zero, one, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. Um, that means that there are two L plus one orbitals in each sublevel. So all that means is one, then three, then five, then seven, then nine, then 11. It's just the odd numbers. Okay, so you can think of, um, you know, the first floor only has one uh, sublevel, and that one sublevel has a single apartment on it. It's, it's just a single room. Okay. The uh, second floor is going to have two sublevels, zero and one, uh, the, the, so that you're going to have a, 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 an apartment with one room, and you're going to have, uh, um, the next one is going to be a suite with three rooms. Okay. So the second level actually has one, two sublevels. Uh, this one has one orbital. This one has three for a total of one, two, three, four orbitals. Okay. So don't worry. This will get slightly, it, 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 it builds up to complex and it will get back to being somewhat simple later. Okay. And the orbital, each orbital uh, is a bedroom within each of those apartments. And each uh, bedroom has a set of bunk beds in it. One for the uh, electron that spin up, the other one is electron spin down. Okay. Okay. So the first floor has one uh, 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 hotel room, or one uh, apartment with uh, a single room, so only two people. Uh, the second floor has an apartment with one room and an apartment with three rooms. The third floor has an apartment with one room, an apartment with three rooms, an apartment with five rooms. Okay. Okay. So, um, the Pauli exclusion principle, yet another dead white guy, is that no two electrons can have the same four quantum numbers. Electrons don't share beds. They can share bunk beds, but not beds. Okay. Uh, electrons are like monks in that way, strictly solid no sharing of beds. They can only have the same four, they can, no one, they, they cannot have the same four quantum numbers. Okay? They can't have the same n, l, m sub l, and n sub s. Okay? So in other words, each orbital will only have two electrons, one spin up, one spin down. And if you want to add another electron to that atom, it has to go into the next available orbital. Okay? Now, uh, these are the general shapes of our orbitals. Uh, you don't have to remember all of these shapes. Okay? What you need to remember is that uh, when L equals zero, uh, S is a sphere, or the shape is a sphere, sorry. And thus, zero is called an S orbital. Okay? S for spherical, I think. Uh, these, this was discovered by Germans, so it's hard to tell. Um, Next up, when L equals one, you have three orbitals uh, that are shaped like peanuts, and those are the P orbitals. Uh, P is definitely not for peanut, um, but it's a helpful mnemonic. Uh, when L equals two, you have five orbitals, and they're shaped like these clover leaves, um, except for this one. That one's a special sort of complex thing. Um, uh, and then finally, when L equals three, you're looking at the F orbitals, and they're a sort of like wicked, complicated clover leaf. Um, I would not ask you to draw the F orbitals because you'd have to be able to draw in three dimensions. Um, the D orbitals, the P orbitals, or the S orbitals are fair game. So definitely remember sphere, peanut, or clover leaf. Okay. And after this, you're you're not going to have to worry about uh, the numbers for L. 
Um, we'll always talk about it in terms of S, P, D, and F. Now, uh, oh, well, that's perfectly timed. That is 15 minutes, and we'll come back to this again in Lecture 12.